All right, we just got finished doing uh, completing the square, doing a little introduction to completing the square and going through this example. Let's go ahead and look at another example. So I'm going to erase most of this stuff here. We'll leave our, our formula information. Okay, let I'll go through um, another example and then maybe you can you can try one and see how you do. Now this one x squared minus six x plus eight equals zero. This is a good example to look at because um, in the last video I talked about how when you're solving a quadratic equation, the main way you're going to do it is you're going to either factor or use the quadratic formula. Well, this problem right here actually factors. The quickest way to solve this quadratic is to factor it because it does factor. The last example we did in, in the last video of completing the square didn't factor. So um, we do know there is something that multiplies to be positive 8 and adds to be negative 6, and that would be uh, negative 4 and negative 2. So if you can factor it, this is going to be the easiest way. Then you set each factor equal to 0 and solve that. So we'll add 4 to both sides, add 2 to both sides, and we end up with x equals 4 or x equals 2. So we know that's the answer. Let's go ahead and, and do this exact same problem by completing the square, just so you can see that it does come out to be the same, although this is a little bit of a longer way. Okay, so remember the first thing we want to do, and actually at this point, if you think you remember from the last video, pause it and try it, try it on your own, and then start the video and see how you did. If you need a little more practice, then kind of follow along here. Okay, so we're going to start by getting this 8 out of the way so we can complete the square with the x squared minus 6x and just move the negative 8 over there. So now we're going to do the whole, okay, what do I have to add here to make a perfect square trinomial on the left? And then always remember, you have, what you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other. So this is where this b over 2 squared things comes in. That's what you're going to want to add to both sides. So what's your b value here? Negative 6. Very good. So what we want to put in this little blank is negative 6 over 2 squared, which is negative 3 squared, which is a positive 9. 9 there, 9 there. Next step is to factor. That's why you completed the perfect square trinomial. So you could make a make it uh, factor it and turn it into a binomial times a binomial. Now if you're getting good at it at this point you might be able to just skip ahead and say well I know it's going to be x minus and it's going to be this number right here before you square it minus 3 squared. That's what it's going to factor to. If you need a step to go ahead and write it out like this that's fine. You know x x what multiplies to be 9 and adds to be negative 6 is negative 3 and negative 3 and then you could write that as x minus 3 squared after you've completed the square these two binomials better come out to be the same that's the whole point of making a perfect square trinomial on the right hand side we have negative 8 plus 9 which is 1 now once you create this perfect square trinomial the next thing you want to do is you're trying to get x by itself so we need to get x out from under this squared thing. So what we're going to do, get rid of that squared by taking the square root of both sides. On the left-hand side, the x minus, uh, the squared and the square root cancel each other out. So we end up with just x minus 3. And you remember what we have to do on the right-hand side when we take the square root of a squared? Hopefully you remember, we got to do plus or minus. And the square root of 1 is just 1. So we can actually go ahead and take that square root. Last time we had the square root of 53 in that last problem. You couldn't simplify that, so you just left it. Whereas this one, you have this perfect square. So go ahead and take the square root of it. Square root of 1 is 1. Now, if you have a perfect square here, like we do, and you can just simplify it, that means the original problem was factorable. So if that ever happens to you. Okay, so last thing we have to do is get x by itself. So we need to get rid of this minus 3. We're going to add 3 to both sides. So we end up with x equals positive or negative 1 plus 3. Remember, the positive and negative give you your two different solutions. So x is positive 1 plus 3, and x could also be negative 1 plus 3. 
plus or minus, separated into the two different cases. 1 plus 3 is 4, negative 1 plus 3 is 2, 4 and 2, just like the two answers we got over there. Same thing. Now, as I said, you can see on the left, factoring is a lot easier than completing the square, if it will factor. But I just wanted to show you this so you're kind of convinced that it's another way to get the same answer. All right, let's try another one. Um, this one is not going to be factorable. So what you want to do on this one, I think, is go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own. And then start it up and see how you did. So here we go. Uh, x squared plus 4x minus 7 equals 0. Now notice, this is not factorable. There's nothing that multiplies to be negative 7 and adds to be 4. As long as there's just a 1 in front of the x squared, we can always do that little test to see if it's factorable. All right, so go ahead and pause it and give it a try. It's always a good way to practice math. All right, let's see how you did here. I'll go through it kind of fast, thinking that you hopefully did it on your own. Add 7 to both sides. So we get x squared plus 4x equals 7. Leave that space there to complete your square. Add what? What do we need to add to complete the square? Well, we're going to do the b over 2 squared. The b value is 4. So 4 over 2 squared. 4 over 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So we're going to add 4 to both sides. If I factor that, I'm going to get x plus whatever was here, that's a positive 2, squared. On the right-hand side, I get 11. Next step, take the square root of both sides. So that gives me x plus 2, because the square and the square root cancel out. And i got to remember to do plus or minus on that side, positive or negative, 11. Last step, get x by itself, subtract 2 from both sides. So I end up with x equals negative 2 plus or minus square root 11. And you can leave it just like that if it doesn't ask for a decimal approximation. If it asks for the two answers separately, then you can separate them out. Negative 2 plus square root of 11 and negative 2 minus square root of 11. Sometimes you'll be asked to write it in set notation negative 2 plus square root of 11, comma, negative 2 minus square root of 11, like that, uh, with your solution set, just depending on how your instructor likes it written out or how your book writes it out. Um, not very often will you need to find the decimals unless you're using this to, say, find the x-intercepts of a parabola or something like that. If that means anything to you, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you need the decimals, just use your calculator and, and punch it in. All right, hopefully that's helpful, um, and, uh, and and that uh, explains it. There, there. If you need to, there's one more example where if you have a 2 in front of the x squared, you got to do things a little bit. Maybe we should just do one of those real quick. Should we do that? If you want to see one of those, hang on, let's do one of those. Uh, otherwise, if this is all you need, that's that's good. You can hit stop. Of course, you can always do that, right? Okay, let's do one of those, just in case, just in case. Let's see, what if I have something like 2x squared? This could get a little bit hairy with fractions and stuff. This one's going to get a little bit, a little sticky. That's okay, sometimes you need to see these sticky ones. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make this uh, look like that thing we were doing where we have the blank. So we're going to minus the 3x over, get the x squared and the x term on one side. So we get 2x squared minus 3x, and then we got the blank, and we have the negative 7 over here. Now what's different about this is we have a 2 in front of the x squared. We can't do the completing the square thing with that 2 there. So we need to get that 2, we need that to be gone. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to divide everything by 2 to get rid of that 2. So if I divide this by 2, i got to divide this by 2, i got to divide this by 2, which is making fractions, which could make things um, sticky for some of us. So these 2's cancel. That's great. And I'm left with x squared. Now I've got minus 3 halves x. And then over on this side, I've got negative 7 halves. 
So now we do the completing the square, add what, add what? What do we got to figure that out? This is where this little formula thing can really come in handy. Our b value now is negative 3 over 2. An alternate form of this formula, b over 2 squared, another way you could think of it is 1 half times b squared because b over 2 is the same as 1 half b. That's going to be a little bit easier when working with this b value of 3 over 2 because it's a fraction. So let's take this b value over here and see what we can do. So to fill in our blank, we need to do 1 half times b, which is negative 3 over 2. And we need to square that. OK, so 1 half times negative 3 over 2, multiply straight across, and we get uh, negative 3 over 4 squared. So 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16. And of course, a negative times a negative is a positive. So 9 sixteenths is our magic number. We're going to put that in our blank, and we have to add that to both sides. All right, now we have to factor. Well, this is a little weird over here for people sometimes, is factoring with fractions. And this is where that, um, that little trick I showed you where what's inside this parenthesis before you square is the value that you need when you're factoring. So this negative 3 fourths, that's what's going to go here, x minus 3 fourths, x minus 3 fourths. That's a great little trick. Before you square that 1 half b value, that's what is uh, going to be in the second part of your binomial when you factor. And you can check it out. If you FOIL this out, um, you'll get this, this uh, trinomial up here. And you might want to take the opportunity to do that. But you can see negative 3 fourths times negative 3 fourths is going to give you your 9 sixteenths. And then if you FOILed it out, you'd get uh, negative 3 fourths x and negative 3 fourths x. So you'd add those together, negative 3 fourths plus negative 3 fourths which would give you negative 6 fourths, which would reduce down to negative 3 halves. So it works. That's a great little shortcut. On this side over here, we're going to have to get a common denominator to add these together. So when, a lot of times when you have a number in front of the x squared, you just end up working with a bunch of fractions is what happens. So we got to multiply top and bottom by 8 here to get a common denominator. Uh, negative 14 over 16 plus 9 over 16. On the left hand side now we have x minus 3 fourths. My minus ran into my fraction a little bit there. Let's separate that. Squared equals 5 sixteenths. Excuse me, negative 5 sixteenths. Now we're going to take the square root of both sides. Okay running out of room here. I'm going to have to get rid of this so we can finish over here. Okay, let's go up over here. See what we've got. Now on the left hand side we've got x minus 3 fourths equals. On the right hand side remember we have to do the plus or minus. And we've got the square root of negative 5 over 16. This is going to give us an opportunity to review a little bit about square roots. When you have a fraction that's a square root, you can split that into the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator, which is really what we want to do here. Because we have a perfect square in the denominator, we can take the square root of 16 and turn that into a 4. Notice in the numerator, we've got the square root of a negative. You remember what that means, the square root of a negative? That's right, that's an imaginary number. So we want to take that i value out of there. As a matter of fact, let me show that step. Instead of putting a negative 5 here, let's split this up into negative 1 times 5. Now if you remember what you're doing here, you don't have to do that, but this might be helpful for some people. That the square root of a negative 1 is i. That's where that uh, i is going to come from for imaginary number. So now we're going to have x minus 3 fourths equals plus or minus i square root 5, that i is coming from the square root of negative 1, over the square root of 16, which is 4. Now we're going to get x by itself by adding 3 fourths to both sides. 
And if you'll notice, we have a common denominator. So we have x equals 3 fourths plus or minus i square root 5 over 4. And we could write that as one single fraction because there's a common denominator is 3 as 3 plus or minus i square root 5 all over 4. Again, depending, some people like it written separate because this is a, a complex number. How you usually write a complex number, 3 fourths plus or minus i square root 5 over 4. And you may even see it with the i in front like this. Um, i times the square root of 5 over 4. It just depends. All these mean the same thing. So you just have to see how they want it written. But you can see this completing the square problem with this 2 in front really made it a lot more challenging, but the basic steps are all the same. So uh, hopefully that helps, and probably most of the completing the square stuff you're going to be doing is going to be the easier stuff that that we were doing in the, in the first video and the first few examples, but it's good to see one of these and, and maybe practice it. All right, I hope that helps, and uh, have fun completing the square.